right, Sean, welcome to the Unicorn Perspective, dude. I'm, I'm excited to have you. I see your, uh, you know, we've chatted a bunch in DMs and stuff, but I, and I see your, your stories every day. And it's uh, the, the FOMO factor that you uh, elicit in your, your social posts is, is unrivaled, I think, compared to, uh, to anybody else that I'm, I'm friends with and follow. That's awesome. Thanks for having me, Max. Awesome. So, let, let's start here because I know you know we just we just spoke and you were saying kind of what your your full time focus is and it's transitioned away from from ecom more into crypto. Um, how how did that start? Because you're you're now so deep into that community and have built up such a large following and, and influence in that community um, and. You know, I'm relatively new to it in terms of being actually involved. I've, I've you know been following it for a long time, but in terms of actually participating in it, um, so this could be kind of an ignorant statement of like I just wasn't aware of your activity in it because I wasn't actively looking in it. But it seems like you know when we you know cross paths at events stuff, it was you know, ecom, 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 and then it was just like this blew up. Is that right, or is it like you've been kind of in it and just like you've been building and building and building kind of slow in the background and then it just has exploded. Yeah. So, I mean, the first crypto boom, I think was in 2018, but I was just getting started back then. So I didn't have enough capital and resources to really take advantage of that, that bull run. So, um, I did e-commerce pretty much for four and a half years, just selling jerseys and saved up enough capital from that to where this bull cycle that started a couple months ago, I had a lot of capital to deploy and resources I met at networking events and um, just used both, combined those two things and was able to just get on board with a couple big crypto projects and um, really scale those. And you kind of breeze past the the econ, the, the humbleness there, like you yeah, sell some, I sell some jerseys. Um, just for anybody that's not, you know, not kind of aware of what you did there and are doing there, obviously. Um, like, can you hit on that? Just because it isn't just like, you know, did some e-com and I was kind of focused there and just selling jerseys. I mean, you, you get you guys are, are massive in that space when it comes to sport, sport jerseys and, and memorabilia. Yeah. So I took the branding route pretty early, which was a, a rare route like five years ago. Most people were just focused on drop shipping, um, no brands. So it ended up just paying off. Like it was easier to market my products when I'm talking to influencers and celebrities, they can check out the website, see where legit, they don't have to worry about scams or anything. So, um, we basically just created custom jerseys, whatever the person wanted on them, we could put like name, number designs and all that. And then we would sell them, uh, either on their site or our website. We did a lot of private label for a lot of music artists. And a lot of um, big politicians as well. So have you have you sold that? Have you or have you like taken money off the table, or did you just bring somebody in to take over as CEO so you can focus on other things? Yeah. So right now I haven't sold it. It's running passively. We have an ad agency, customer service agency. So I'm pretty hands off. It's still generating some decent cash flow. I only pay myself 50k a year from that company, but I saved up. Uh, doing that for three years and put that all into crypto pretty much. So let, let's, let's dive into that. Like the, I'm trying to figure out the best way, the best way to, to word this, like where, where are we at with what's going on? Cause it, it seems like when I, and, and this is again, just a relative outsider looking in it, it seems like we're in a period kind of like the you know 80s and early 90s in wall street right when you watch wolf of wall street and, and look at jordan belfort and, and that you know those types of things where there's just a, a lot of otcs and and the the kind of margin on them is massive and the commission on them is is massive and the the liquidity is, is relatively low and so a a handful of big buyers can can come in and dramatically you know move the price up like and then obviously that that whole industry got heavily regulated and it's still there right there's still obviously penny stocks and it hasn't gone away but it's gotten a lot harder to do that and there's a lot more oversight on that like do you see what's happening right now with coins outside of obviously the kind of you know 
Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and the kind of st- the main ones you see on Coinbase. Is, is that what's happening? Is, is it different? Is it going to end the same? Yeah, great question. Um, so I've consulted with a few lawyers, some that have worked at the SEC, some that specialize in crypto, and they're basically telling me to treat crypto as a security because right now it technically isn't, but um, like down the road that can happen pretty quick. So whenever I'm talking about it, I'm extra careful about like just because there's all these pump and dump schemes and stuff. So someone with my following can post a coin and it'll go up a lot, especially the low market cap ones. So I just have to be super careful with what I'm promoting. But uh, I could see that happening 100%. I was actually talking to Jordan at the 100 million mastermind last week about all that. And he's diving into crypto pretty deep. So he uh, connected me with his lawyer to make sure everything's good there. Yeah, because it's it's a a tricky place to be because you're you're in a period where there is the technology is moving faster than regulators can obviously do anything mm-hmm. about it. And, and even if you know, I was talking to a buddy of mine, Vinny Fisher, a few weeks ago, who you know, runs Fully Accountable, which is like the, the largest kind of back office CPA uh, company or uh, kind of accounting company that works in our industry in ecom, and, and he started as a, as a lawyer, and we were talking just about crypto and, and everything and it is an interesting place because a lot of it is is honor system so even if there is regulation that's put in it's still like you know if i own uh you know a pound or you know uh, uh, whatever of, of gold right i just own like a, a pallet of gold in my basement and it's in a safe and i don't tell the irs that i have it like you know it's the honor system there but they could come to my home and they mm-hmm. could go to the basement with a warrant and they could find here well you have gold obviously that wouldn't happen but like it, it's a physical thing Right at this point, it's like they would essentially have to compel whoever you know gets arrested to like you know unlock their their phone and put in their you know their passphrase and stuff, which is kind of what happened with I forget the name of the the, the guy in Jersey that was like kind of laundering money and made like eighty million dollars. They you know arrested him and said, well, like you know open everything up, tell us all this stuff, and he, he didn't and was putting every, all the trades and stuff under like you know fictitious names and stuff, so they couldn't like you know couldn't find anybody um sorry no sorry about that no worries um and so it, it's i'm curious like what it's going to look like in in the coming years in terms of uh just regulation compliance taxation um and, and how people are going to be held accountable how things are reinforced and i know you're you know you're talking to a lot of people and stuff like do you have any any ideas, just like high level ideas, of like what, where you think it's going to end up, like once the government kind of catches up? Yeah, I mean, Biden wants to raise the capital gains tax. We'll see if that goes through. A lot of people in crypto are moving to Puerto Rico right now because it's 4% tax there. All, everyone making over 10 mil a year for the most part in crypto is moving there. Um, and as far as regulations, I mean, if they really turn these into securities then they're going to really start cracking down on people promoting coins and stuff because they can really impact the price easily with with all coins as you've been seeing yeah so like what is your your actually let's i want to talk about kind of your, your view on on all coins in, in a second but like let's let's do the, the capital gains thing what is what are your thoughts on that in, in general i've talked to a bunch of people about their feelings about you know matching long-term capital gains to income you know I, I think it's a terrible idea, um, but I'm curious what your thoughts are on it. Yeah, well, obviously it sucks that they want to increase it. Um, the sh- they are only increasing the short term, right? Well, I mean, right now, anything less than a year, you're getting you're getting taxed at income anyway. But looking at um, you know doubling you know uh, you know post one year capital gains. To, yeah. to be more um, in line with like, basically at the end of the day, it's like, you know, the the argument essentially is it's, you know, the, the Warren Buffett argument is that it's not fair that I, you know, my effective tax rates lower than my secretary, which is, you know, kind of a bullshit argument because it's not about like, you know, your your effective rates, it's about like, you know, how much you pay in total, right? And it's, it's totally different. Um, but making it so, you know, I'm not able to continue to invest and, and make a majority of my income from investing as opposed to wages and pay a substantial, you know, potentially less tax there. So let's make that on par with what your 
you know, kind of income tax is going to be, uh, which kind of de-incentivizes any, you know, any risk taking in, in the whole, uh, you know, process. And, and, and frankly, it's like the, the, the wealthiest people in the world aren't ever selling anything anyway. Right? It's like it's their, right. you know, they're buying or investing in assets and then they're using that for leverage to then buy more assets. And then they're, it's, it's continuing to build up this portfolio. That's what, you know, a lot of people in real estate, like you're just kind of rolling over, rolling over, rolling over. And so it's, you know, it doesn't really impact the uber wealthy, which is interesting. Yeah, that's sort of where I'm positioning myself this year. Um, I'm probably not going to cash out much at all, if any, if even anything. And I'm just going to leverage my portfolio to, to gain assets like real estate and stuff like that. But so how do you do that with these these coins that are, are seem to, you know, pop and then drop, right? It's are, are you saying you're holding those or are you just converting them to other coins? And like, and that's well, actually, let me say that. And then I have a question about the conversion part of it. But is that your your play or are you selling things when they're like popping? Um, so where you get taxes when you convert it back to fiat. So you can sell the coins off back for Bitcoin, Ethereum or Tether and then reinvest it, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not completely sure on that, but that's what I heard. And um, for the altcoins, I mean, some of them are super low cap, so you can make crazy returns like 100% in a day. It's pretty common with those. Um, but I'm not sure if the liquidity is there on some of them because when you go to cash it out, then if the liquidity isn't there, then you're not gonna get the full price you're asking for. Yeah, that, that's the interesting part, right? It's like, it's, there has to be some on the other side of the, of the trade, right? So it's like the, the price can skyrocket on these things, but you need to be able to exit it. And, and so I'm curious, like, I've seen some of the, you know, the, the posts and, and, you know, I have buddies that are in the group and I've seen some of the, you know, the, the just volume, right? And I'm curious, like, if, if it's, if you're, able to to exit a lot of these trades at least in full or if it's something where you're, you're only kind of exiting able to exit 25 35 percent of your position and the remaining position you're you know taking a you know a, a hit in terms of the the price just because there's such thin liquidity and, and trading volume on the other end of it yeah if the coin doesn't have the trading volume and you have a big position then you're not going to get the full price like whatever it says you're not going to get that for all your bags because it's based off what people are willing to pay for it so then what is so like is there a, a number that you're seeing with a lot of these trades where like, I, I was looking at the math of you know what's a worthwhile investment because i imagine like you know, if if you are confident in a lot of these and they, they just two, three, four, five X, that's great. The, you know, ideally you'd want to put as much money in as possible, but if you know that there's a inherent kind of ceiling on a lot of these, you know, like the typical altcoin trading volume is, you know, 10 million a day or 50 million a day, whatever it is, then you know, like, well, you know, I'm not going to put five or 10 million into it because the chance of me getting, you know, 60 million out on my six X return is almost non-existent. So <laughs> is like, what, do, what are you looking at there in terms of how you're determining what to invest? Yeah, I mean, I'm still figuring it out. I, I started like two, three months ago, but I have a lot of friends that are in the, have been in the space through all, all the bear markets and everything. So they sort of helped me out. In terms of the, they call them uh, shit coins, the ones that just come out, they're brand new. The trading volume is under like a million, five million a day. I only put a few thousand in those because you never know if you're going to be able to liquidate on those. And then for the more established stuff like Ripple, Cardano, all those top 50, 100 altcoins, it's pretty safe where you can put in like a good amount and not worry about liquidity because the volume is there. Got it. And are you looking at anything beyond, you know, like when I make investments, you know, I'm typically looking at the actual the actual company, right? Like what does yeah. this company do? Do I, do I understand it? Do I believe in its long-term growth trajectory? You know, like we, we've, you know, we've talked about Omi, right? That's one that, you know, we talked about in the past and like, I, I get that, right? Like the, to me that, that makes sense as a, a platform. If you're, if you're bullish on a trend, right? Of NFTs and digital collectibles, it's like, okay, this is a, a business that does that. They have licenses. It looks, it looks really interesting, promising there. 
is the like I guess what what is the the breakdown for you in terms of investments you're making based on on that versus ones that you're making based on the fact that like hey this is you know this is a a coin that I just feel good about the momentum there's people talking about it but it's still early on like I don't give a shit about what they do like I don't care about what they do I, I, I care less and because I'm not going to be in it for long yeah. Yeah, so I'll just start off by saying this isn't financial advice, obviously. Yeah. But this we'll is make sure what... to put that before the video too. We'll put we'll everything. Yeah. Nothing we're saying is financial advice for anybody. Yeah, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'll disclose what I do. And keep in mind, I'm 24. I consider that pretty young in the investing space, so I'm more risk. Like I'm way more risky than the average person, I think. Yeah. Um. So I'll put in like 50% into all coins. And then the other 50 into like the top 10 coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, ADA, and um, I think DOT. And I stake all four of those. So staking is when you earn interest on the coins. You don't plan on selling them anytime soon. Because my goal is I want to stake my coins where I could just live off the interest. Um, because with banks, you're only getting, you know, 1%, 2% or whatever. Yeah, it's way but lower than that even. Yeah, we're at historic low, low interest rates, yeah. Yeah, with staking, you can get, I think Bitcoin's paying 5 6% on Gemini. And um, some of them, you can get up to 100% with altcoin staking. But uh, I'll put 50% into those and then the other 50 into, I guess, riskier investments, altcoins, newer ones, um, even shit coins. But yeah, that's what I do personally. I know most people put way more into Bitcoin and Ethereum and then use like 10 20% on the altcoins which I think is perfectly fine also. On the staking, because um, I imagine, you know, the average person watching probably isn't as uh, kind of crypto fluent, right? Because um, I've, I've read stuff about just like the uh, a downside to that. And I and I agree. I think it's a, it's, it's a great strategy, especially if you're, if you're bullish on a coin and you're not planning to sell it for. It makes no sense to just, it's like keeping your money, your, your money in cash. Like it doesn't make sense. Um, do you lose out on the the price appreciation? There was something I read, and I forget the, the term that it was called, but it's basically like if you're staking X and that the, the the value of that coin doubles, triples, you're mm. not participating in that upside, right? Like, or am I wrong there? That's a great question, and I actually I'm not positive on the answer. I use an app called Gemini. Gemini. I believe the Winklevoss twins might own that one, if I if I remember correctly, but um. It's based off APR yearly, but they pay out monthly back yeah. in that token. And I'm not sure if the value goes with it or if it's your initial that you put in, you get that every month. So that's a good question. Yeah, for, forget it's, I was, I went deep down a rabbit hole <laughs> a few weeks ago, <laughs> reading, reading a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, that seemed to be like, it was one of the, um, one of the downsides. But at the end of the day, if like, if you're taking bigger swings, in terms of looking for major returns in altcoins or other coins, and, and you're you know just looking for kind of stable uh, income, passive income coming in, then you know hell six, eight, ten percent a year is is great. Um, you're not going to get that really anywhere else. Even if you just look at the you know the stock market and you're just looking at kind of long term investing, getting you know a six to eight percent annual return is is a pretty uh, pretty great place to to be. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good for sure. And with with Bitcoin and Ethereum, like it's almost considered low risk these days because if you look at the historical charts of those, they've just been going up. Yeah, what's what's the what's the play? Like, I guess this is what's interesting about um, what's happening now with the crypto and just the boom there and how many people are getting involved there is like the the long-term play for people other than the obvious of like i'm just investing and making money right it's like but from a an entrepreneurial perspective right? like you're an entrepreneur and i'd imagine that you you're not you know content kind of just just sitting around and you know trading and just you know making money you you, you want to you know do things and build things and and be be creative there like what are what are you trying to do in this space? What's got you excited in this space? Like, what do you see in the next like three to five years you're going to be working on? Yeah, so right now we're we're obviously in a bull market now. I'm not sure how much longer it's going to last, but 
but I just want to tie myself to a project with a uh, real world utility. That's why I really like Omi a lot. Cause even though it is an altcoin there, they have an app in the app store that's generating revenue. Um, so I want to be part of cryptos like that, where even in a, in a bear market, there's still going to be cash flowing in money and, uh, it's an actual company. It's not just, uh, some random coin, like that doesn't even have any website or app or anything. So I want to tie myself to a project. I, uh, I know a lot of your audience is into marketing. So I think a good play for people like that is to reach out to some coins they believe in and see if they need any help marketing and maybe um, charge them monthly or whatever to help them out. Because a lot of these coins don't really know how to do social media marketing or any of that. So I think there's a big gap there. How can they, I know it's evolved over time, but it seems like it's still relatively restrictive. Like, what are you saying marketing trend wise working for, for different coins? I know like the influencer route seems to be a popular one. Yeah, it's, it, it's a lot of gray area right now. So I'm not sure exactly like the correct way to market, but you have to, with influencers, they have to disclose that they're being paid out by the coin. They have to use the hashtag ad and all that stuff, make sure they're compliant. That seems to be what's working right now. I'm not sure Facebook's allowing ads yet. I've seen ads for like uh, exchanges, but not coins. So you'd probably know more than that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, TikTokers are, are doing pretty well and Instagram influencers. And something I've wondered is like how, if, if I wanted to tomorrow say like, I'm gonna start the, probably wouldn't be a good name because Uniswap's so big, but like the, the unicorn token, right? Like, and mm -hmm. I, have, I have no freaking, you know, business plan, like there's nothing, like it's just, I just want to sell, I want to create a, a coin and I want to sell it. Like how easy is that? Like what's the barrier to entry for anybody to, to do that? Uh, it's pretty easy, honestly. I watched my friend make a coin in a day. Um, so I don't think it's that difficult. I think it costs a few thousand bucks if anything, but that would be considered a shit coin if it doesn't have any utility and it's just like a meme. Um, so you want to find some sort of utility with the unicorn coin. And if you can make that happen, then you can get a real company going behind it. But it's pretty crazy to think that it's like it, that you could, anybody can create a coin that has no attachment to any type of underlying fundamentals and, and get people to talk about it. Right. And like drive the, the price of it. It's, it's wild how how relatively simple that that process is, and I guess like the gap between like I think I guess the, the the question is like how do you how do you bring le legitimacy to crypto to get the masses? Because I think that's what we're missing right now, right? I think like Bitcoin's taking a long time to get to a a period where institutions understand it and believe in it. Like it, it's there's confidence across the board in it. But you still like I think the the gap with a lot of it, other than people that can get on Coinbase, is like the the average person, right? Like the average person knows that you know I can go down to H and R Block, um, or you know like one of my local you know financial advisors, and I can say, hey, I want to buy stocks, I want to buy Apple stock, and they can help you buy it, and it's really easy. I can sign up for E Trade, right? And I can go and I can buy Apple stock, and it's it's here, it's a stock, I own a company, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. Like how do you how do you get or how do you see it getting there? If you ever see it getting there, like that gap of the masses mm -hmm. getting into crypto beyond just like Bitcoin, right? Beyond just kind of the, the two or three coins that have become very, very popular that are on the CNBC on the ticker. Yeah, that's a really good question. So the biggest issue right now is uh, a lot of these coins are really tricky to buy. I'm sure you yeah. experienced this. I had to literally like really smart people were reaching out to me. They're like, I have no idea how to buy this, like self-made millionaires and billionaires. So they just have to figure out like Coinbase makes it so easy for people to buy, but they don't have all the the newer coins or all the, all these all coins that there's a lot of hype about. They only have like the main 25, 50 coins or whatever. So I guess they just have to figure out an easier way for people to, to grab these coins because there's so many different pairs when you're buying like OMI, for example, you got to convert your, your bank account to USDC. Then you got to convert that to USDT. 
then you got to buy OMI with that. So like, that's very difficult to do if you've never purchased crypto before. And then you got to uh, move it to a wallet and you got to make sure that wallet's set up to like to actually hold that specific, you know, type of token. And then you got to have go to move it. Like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was embarrassing for me how like long it took me to, to figure out how to do something. Now it seems really obvious because I've done it a bunch of times, but like it was when I was like looking, I was like, there's a lot of people doing this. It can't, it can't be this, this, uh, <laughs> this hard and this tricky. It's, it's that it's like the fact that there's these, all these steps for me, it's not what, what I, what I believe is even harder barrier to get over. And this has freaked me out even still to this day is the thought that like I could fuck up where I'm sending it to. Like I could fuck up like any little thing I fuck up along the way, potentially I could just lose this. Like <laughs> I could just like lose 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, like snapping my finger. And and I think the average person feels like, hey, you know, even though they might be wrong about this, like I know if my, my money is at JP Morgan, right? Like if my money is my bank account, like it's there. Like I can go and I can send a wire and like the, if, the, if they fuck up the wire, it'll bounce back, right? If like, if if I, you know, if I go to my ATM, I take out cash. Like it's this tangibility to money, even though in reality, like like my Chase branch down the street, my private banker there like doesn't have like all my money there, right? It's like, it, it's a lot of it's still right. zeros and ones, even in our traditional monetary system. But I think that's also a big part of it for me is like, instilling confidence in an average person that they're not going to mess a step up and like everything they just tried to buy or sell it vanished into the ether yeah i learned that the hard way so anyone watching highly recommend sending a test before you ever send a big amount so just send like a one dollar test to your wallet whenever you're sending moving stuff around but yeah i lost a hundred grand because i <laughs> i sent uh some crypto to the wrong place and I never got that back. So I triple check everything now. <laughs> you imagine like, I want to hear the other side of the stories of people that just wake up one day and like somebody randomly sent them, you know, a, a dollar or a thousand dollars or a hundred thousand dollars. Like it would be interesting just if you, you know, put the wrong address in there, it goes to a different address and nobody's returning it. Now there's no honor system, right? It's like, Hey, I think you meant to send this to somebody else. I'm going to send this back to you. <laughs> Yeah, there's really nothing you can do once you send it to the wrong place. Yeah, what's what's scary too is like, especially if you're a if you're just getting started. Cause this happened to me as well. Like Coinbase, for example, they're you know every transaction you do, like your BTC wallet, they're putting in a new you know new address. It's like a new address every time, even though they keep all the other addresses active technically. And I remember like one time giving, I did a test transaction. And then I mm -hmm. sent my buddy, you know, the, the same thing. So I sent over this one. I woke up this morning and I went and I was like, that's a different address. And I like freaked <laughs> out because I thought, and he said he sent it. And I was like, oh shit, like it's a I don't know how the address change. And I didn't realize that that was the, the case that they, you know, they're changing addresses every transaction, but you're still kind of grandfathered in that it'll still end up in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. It's nuts. And like for me, it's, I, you know, I don't play, like most of my money is in, you know, in stocks and other other things, um, so I don't have a, you know a huge percent of my net worth in in crypto, but I, mm -hmm. I have you know buddies and friends that you know have millions, right? And like even you know I, I know you have a ton in there. Um, like, do do you still get worried? I know you've been doing this for for a while, and you have obviously a lot of confidence. But like, when you're moving six figures, seven figures, it still has to be like there still has to be a little twinge, right? Of like nerve, like moving it between places. <laughs> yeah yeah i don't think that'll ever go away i mean you could literally lose a million dollars if you type one wrong thing so it's that's why i like the qr code better because at least you know you're scanning it and you, you, there's no room for mistyping that but uh yeah it's definitely nerve-wracking every time we have to do that and this week like took a big it was the first time i because i'm new to this but it's the first time i took a big hit like that everything was down 30 percent so yeah, it's definitely risky having a lot of your a lot of your um, money in there because I have like 80, 90 percent of my money in the crypto right now. Yeah, so it's yeah, you're pulling the the uh, the Donald Trump the interview where he said you know my my net worth fluctuates by the day in the wind right <laughs> so I can be worth you know worth a few billion and I can be down a few billion. Um, yeah, pretty much. It was 
luckily I don't got paper hands, but um, I got to get prepared because this, this bull market, like I said earlier, isn't going to last forever, but I just have to put it in the right places, I guess. But that, that's key though. So what you said right there, and I think this is a really interesting point for anybody listening, watching, however you're consuming this right now, is like this idea of short-term thinking versus long-term thinking is is really important, right? It's like if you if you operate in swings, you're going to lose your shirt, right? If like you're making decisions based on day-to-day, week-to-week volatility, you are going to get absolutely crushed. Like it's, it's staggering the statistics of like the, the number of people that sell at the worst time and buy at the worst time, right? Because yeah. like the, the average person is selling when the market's tanking because of fear and they're buying when the market's frothy because of FOMO. And mm-hmm. the smart person is buying when everyone's selling and they're selling when everyone's buying, right? Like it's it's really hard for people to get past that because it's so emotional. It's hard to sit on the yeah. sidelines and be like, hey, all my buddies are making a shit ton of money. I keep seeing all this, seeing all this. Like I want to get in, right? But somebody's got to be the last one in. Somebody's going to be, you know, buying at the very peak. Somebody's going to be selling at the, at the very bottom. And so it's like, if you're, if you're confident in your underlying thesis, right? If you believe that, like, for example, Bitcoin, if you believe that Bitcoin one day is truly going to be a store of value, a hedge against inflation, is going to be a currency, whatever you, you might believe it's going to be, then it shouldn't matter if it drops 30%. It shouldn't matter if it drops 80%, right? If anything, if you believe in that, you should be buying more, right? That's the crazy thing. If people aren't buying more when that happens, they're, they're freaking out and they're selling, like... <laughs> That's a that's a deal, right? It's like, hey, if I'm if I like Bitcoin at sixty grand because I believe it's going to be worth two fifty, like I love it at forty grand. And it's the yeah. same thing with with stocks. It's like it's you know dollar cost averaging is the concept of consistently buying every week, month, quarter, whatever it is at different prices. So you end up getting a, a much lower effective price. Um, and that happened to me with you know, like I like bought a, a firm, right? Like the, they IPO'd a few a few months ago and a firm there. Uh, you know, kind of the go-to um, kind of pay later solution for e-com, right? You can go on Peloton yeah. and you can buy, you know, a three grand Peloton. You can pay over, you know, a year, two years without interest. Yeah. And like, I just believe in the product. I mean, e-com, I, I get it. Like, it makes sense to me. I've seen the stats. I've seen the increase in AOV, all that stuff. And I and I bought it in the IPO, which is a terrible fucking idea. Just a recommendation for anybody. Like, unless <laughs> you're buying pre-IPO, like getting in before the IPO, like in VC rounds, like, Buying the IPO is usually a terrible idea um, because it almost always goes down. Um, but I just I, I'm long term in it, and it's it dropped massively. But I you know bought it multiple times at different levels as it's dropped, and so now I have like you know my initial investment looks awful, but I also bought it at its bottom, and that's you know double digit return, and so my effective price looks a lot better. But yeah, it's 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 definitely hard. I think if you're like heavy in crypto. And you're, especially if you're new to investing, to like uh, to not freak out and and sell a bunch of stuff as the price is dropping. Yeah, I love that. No, yeah, it's definitely emotional roller coaster. Every day, it's it's a new day where I'm either up a lot, down a lot. It's never <laughs> like I'm just maintaining in crypto. But uh, I like what you said. Like I think people overcomplicate it. Like if you like the company, if you believe in the product or the company. Like that's, that's just following that has worked for me. Like I invested in Shopify stock in 2016 and Tesla stock the same year and held it up until this year. And then I cash it out for crypto, but I like those two companies a lot. And I think people can study all the charts they want to do and do all this technical analysis, but it just comes down to, do you believe in the product or the brand? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, do you believe in the product? Do you believe in the brand? Do you understand it? And are you willing to hold for a period of time, right? And and reinvest either dividend reinvestment or just like the, the power of compound growth is incredible. And that's like, you know, you're a lot younger than me, like starting early, starting investing in your early 20s is massive. Like even if you fuck up a lot, like you could lose everything, but like just the fact that you started so young is massive. It's the difference in the amount of money you need to invest and save monthly every few years, like especially when you get like 30 to 40 to 50, those those gaps to like have a million dollars of retirement is insane. Like getting those extra few years over a 40, 50 year time horizon is uh, is absolutely massive. And the reality is like, 
most people are not going to beat the market, right? It's like you might have the right thesis. You're like a guy like Michael Burry, right? Who like he saw the the housing crisis coming. Right? He mm-hmm. saw it. He he bet on it. He created derivatives basically, so he could bet on. It. He basically created you know these uh, these uh, is derivative allowed him to bet against housing prices, and yeah. uh, and he. He still almost lost everything because it's timing. You can be right, but time it wrong. And and he luckily like you know just made it by the skin of his teeth. But like he could have a right trade then, but be you know for the next three ideas they're just flopped. Right, he just lost everything. And like even the best traders are gonna have great great years where they have the right thesis and they make a lot of money. And then they have years where they just have the wrong thesis and they went all in on something and and, and bombed. But if you're you know over decades returning five, six, eight, ten percent, and you're continuing to build that principle, I mean, that, that's, it's not sexy, right? I like, think that's the thing. It's like a lot of people want to do the sexy stuff. They want to like trade options. I want to, you know, do futures. I want to do all this, you know, for it. Like I want to do all this stuff. The, the reality is like most people listening, if that's what you're going to do, like you're not going to make money. Like I think it's 95, I think it's like 95% of day traders, maybe it's even higher, don't make money, like lose money. Wow. It's, it's staggering. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, that's what's great about starting young and having money to work with. It's like you can take bigger risks and some of those risks are going to pay off massively and some are going to bomb. But like you have, if something's bomb, you have so much time to rebuild and you also are, you know, you have, you're placing a lot of bets. So you just need, you know, a few home runs to really pan out um, and then to continue to reinvest those, those profits into, into the right things. Do you see most people in your chat? Um, Cause I know you have a few groups of different levels of like net worth in, in crypto. Are they similar to you in their like allocation or do you see kind of a wide range? Like some people in there that are just like 5% in crypto, some that are hundred percent in crypto. Uh, it's a pretty wide range, but there's a lot of FOMO right now. Like people are willing to, uh, to risk some money in this market. I noticed. And a lot of them get burned because they don't, they're just investing in all these random altcoins. There's a new coin being invented every hour these days. So you got to like really do your due diligence. Um, I think the founding team's important. The coins that are anonymous, I don't like those as much because I want to know who I'm dealing with. So I really look at the, the founders, the advisors. That's why like Omi, like, I mean, they have Alfred Kahn as one of their, their advisors. The man brought Pokemon to the United States and the Western world. Like that alone sold me. And then on top of that, all their other licenses. So I, I believe in uh, teams, teams like build the company. So so what are you going to do after? Because so, it does it does scare me a little bit, like what you just said, which is when you have a lot of people that have, that have been on the sidelines that have this FOMO and are, and are diving in, that's usually to me a, a sign that we're, we're Bubbles a buzzword, right? But like, um, but at a, a peak, let's call it like a you know a, a peak because things go up, they go down, they go up. Um, do you do you think that's the the case? And do you think if we are at a peak, do you think it can be uh, differentiated between like altcoins and uh, you know more kind of stable coin? Not not stable coins, an actual thing, but like you know more popular coins like like Bitcoin. If if there's a like a, a burst in it. Yeah, well, I mean, even Bitcoin can take a 30% dive oh, yeah. at any time, sometimes even 40. And I think last year it took 50. Um, but I think in the long run, Bitcoin has been proven that it's it's going up. So if you can wait a couple, wait it out for a couple of years, if you don't have the mindset where this, this might go down and you need to wait a couple of years, then it's probably not the right investment because... I mean, Bitcoin was down for like two, three years or whatever recently. And then this bull cycle started. Um, but in terms of the altcoins, like like Omi's tied to revenue. So even when we do go into a bear market, I don't think that one will be affected as greatly as some of these other altcoins because they still have cash flow coming in, which which can help out and they can use that towards marketing and all their other expenses. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking at my portfolio and sort of, saying to myself can this coin last like a few years or is it just if the utility isn't there then i'm probably looking at selling it and moving it into tether for now and exploring other options 
what do you um what do you think about nfts and that's like it's obviously tied to, to crypto to an extent but like it's uh i know initially we were talking a few months ago you're we talking about top shot and you know you did you were doing really well in there i don't know where you're at with it right now in terms of your your activity do you think like do you see what's happening in nfts right now like 2017 with bitcoin where it's this massive surge but it's mainly like early adopters and there's no real backing so it's gonna you know peak drop off and then it's going to take a few years to build some legitimacy to get institutions and and big money behind it to decrease in volatility yeah i mean i think it already peaked based off some articles i was reading um i think sales peaked two months ago and now they've been dropping um a lot of sales are going down with unknown artists but i think the the branding side of the nfts like with celebrities and household names are going to continue to do decent. I think um, NFTs are going to integrate with augmented reality, virtual reality, and there's a play there. There's there's some NFT coins that are still doing pretty well. Um, top shot, the problem was people couldn't cash out. And I think BitCloud's going to have a similar issue. So as soon as they enabled that, a lot of people started selling off and the prices went down. Um, so big cloud, there's a lot of hype and FOMO there right now. And I'm curious to see when they enable that, what's going to happen. What do you think in general about that platform? Like, do, do you think it's a, it's a, to me, the, the underlying technology of, of, or the underlying concept, I won't say technology, cause that's different, but the underlying concept of like a decentralized social network and creating like a, a, a social network as a protocol. So it's not just owned by Facebook or Twitter, right? That, that fascinates me. And I think that's really cool and, and, and the future, in my opinion. I'm, I'm definitely torn about whether I actually like the, the utility of like how the use case of, of BitClout. Um, yeah, I've been back and forth as well. Did you see the recent CoffeeZilla video on it? I haven't. Okay, so yeah, check that out. That kind of scared me a little bit. Um, 42%, I believe, of the tokens were allocated to investors and pre, pre, pre guys that got in before it came out, which is a lot. So they yeah, have that's, a lot. That's massive. Yeah, they have a lot of control. They said it was only 10% on the white paper, but he did some, some digging and it ended up being 42%. Um, I've seen what happened with Top Shot. I was profitable like $150,000. And then as soon as they enabled withdrawals, all that profit went away. <laughs> so I see that happening with big clout. And um, I think the concept's cool, but I don't think those prices are realistic right now. Yeah, and it's also, it's what's hard for me to wrap my head around is attaching a, a dollar value to something that doesn't actually have a dollar value. Like it's, there are models out there that have been around for a while where, you know, investors can uh, buy off your, you know, student loans, right? Can like pay for college or something like that. And they get a, a percent of your future wages, right? There's things like that, or there's a, um, I forget the name of the company, but they, they've become really popular lately where they're essentially investing in like minor league um, baseball players, right? They're giving like a hundred grand or whatever, 200 grand. And then they're getting a percent of their, you know, future earnings in their contract. Um, mm. And one of their initial investments just got signed. I forget his name, but got like a you know sixty million dollar deal or something like that. So massive deal. Wow. It was a big big payoff, and it kind of validated the model. Um, and so that makes sense to me because it's hey, um, investing in X a person, and that investment entitles me to future earnings from this person. So they're directly connected. The money I'm putting in is connected to money that's going to come out in the future. This is challenging because it's like money going in to person X has no direct connection to their actual earnings. Like, for example, I could be on there, right? And, and oh, I am on there, but like I could make 100 times more in 2021 than I made in 2020, mm -hmm. right? But my influence doesn't grow at all. And I'm not, if anything, I like take a step back. And like my, you know, in my market cap or my worst kind of a bit clout doesn't change. To me, right. that's there's a that's a problem there because there's nothing tangible that you're actually getting as an investor. Right. 
yeah i yeah i fully get that yeah it's not really tied to anything physical like you could become a lot more successful and the coin price won't change because how would people know yeah it's 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 that and then it's this is this idea of like the the kind of mental impact that can have on people that's the other thing i'm thinking about is like I mean, I think there's a lot of benefits. So I'm not just shitting on it just to shit on it. Like, I think there's some interesting and, and some cool things about it. Um, and I'm, I'm on it, obviously. But um, but like we already have such a, a kind of fucked up kind of next generation that's so obsessed with social media, right? And there's such a dopamine rush associated with likes and comments and follows that like putting a, it, it, turning the dollars, right? Like I can only see that becoming a, a stronger connection like the dopamine rush coming from your coin price now versus just your followers like that's next level it's like i'm actually making money from my following growing from my influence growing yeah i mean looking at it from an influencer point of view i mean you literally claim your account and you make money off the bat and then when you post you get money too so a lot of them i think that's why a lot of people joined it's pretty much just money sitting there for you have they got any um any shit from celebrities because like i know there was a a an issue about like them essentially using people's names like putting them on there and creating accounts without permission um yeah yeah they've gotten some cease and desist i'm not sure on any particular names but it's interesting to see how that'll play out if if what they're doing is you know allowed because if not then they're gonna have to shift their whole model yeah i'd imagine that the, the one thing that's kind of helped them is the fact that it's hard to get mad if you're like a celeb is like that about, Hey, you did this for me. And I have like six figures just sitting there. <laughs> so I'd imagine that's probably for a lot of people, like they would have complained if it was just like a social network without any of that. But it's like, well, you just made me, you know, $200,000. At least you know, they can't swap it. They can't cash it out, but it's like, it's there. Um, so I'll just, yeah, I won't, yeah. I won't, you know, cease and assist you. Well, you could sell it over the counter right now at a discount. That's true. But you can't cash it out on the site yet. I wonder when they're gonna do that. Yeah, and, and like you said, I mean, if that number is true, like a forty percent kind of insider ownership, then the meets like you know you look at when a stock has like a lockup period that ends, right? Like usually after the first six months, uh, you know, early employees, investors, founders can sell you know excise options, sell out of their stock. And there's usually a big, you know, a big price dip because there's a lot of people selling, a lot more people selling than, than buying. And I'd imagine if that's like, if you have 40% of the outstanding coin owned by a small group of people, that when that option is open, like that's going to be like the floodgates kind of open there. Yeah. I mean, they handed them out, so it cost them nothing. Might as in their heads are probably like, let me cash this out while I can, you know? Yeah. Do you think there's um, like anything interesting being built on, on top of it? Cause I know it's like, that's the idea, right? For it is like, this is kind of a, a use case of the technology and there's gonna be a lot of like stuff that we're gonna build on top of this, this concept. Um, you're saying other platforms building on top of it? Yeah. Yeah, I think they prove that crypto and social media, like that works. So I'm sure tons of people are gonna replicate it or try to do something because the uh the main guy where you send the bitcoin to to get your big clout last time i checked he got like 220 million dollars already and like that's almost all profit so that's crazy that's nuts <laughs> yeah that's, that that's is, not even uh... on all the otc deals people have done so there, there's probably like over 300 million dollars on the site like being uh put into celebrities or whatever yeah, that's that's pretty wild um so yeah, let's let's see. Like we're at oh, it's amazing. Sometimes like when, I, when I'm chatting with friends, that I, I like totally lose track of lose track of time. I just realize we're we're coming up on the 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 wow. hour. That I want to be respectful of your your time, dude. Um, for for anybody that's like that's listening, I know you're you're not kind of like actively promoting you know anything, but I know you got a few things you're you're working on, involved in. Um, if people want to learn more about what you got going on if they, you know, have a large amount of crypto and want to get involved in one of your, your, you know, kind of group threads, what's the best place for them to, to go? How can they learn more about that? Yeah. Just DM me on Instagram or, or Facebook. I'll check to, um, Sean, Mike Kelly. 
I have a free chat and then one that if you have over a million dollars in crypto, I just have to verify it and I could get you in there. And it's just a networking chat where we discuss uh, all the crypto news and stuff. And um, I met some really cool people just through that uh, group chat. That's awesome. And a super smart idea um, to get, you know, really su successful people in a, a group together um, and have them voluntarily do it without really having to, uh, you know, to sell them much. Yeah, no, it's definitely paid off. I mean, networking events in general, I saw you're, um, you're having one soon, right? Yep. Master yeah, we have the Founders Mastermind that we're, we have, we have an event in, uh, in June here in St. Pete. Yeah, I can honestly say like paying for masterminds, um, best investment I ever made because some of the people I met in there have led to seven, eight figure deals um, and you can't get that ROI just sitting on your phone, you know? Yeah, a hundred percent. So that's, that's awesome. So yeah, just uh, shoot Sean a, a DM on Instagram if you uh, want to get into that free chat or if you have a, a million dollars plus in crypto and uh, want to get into that A plus players group of, yeah. of ballers that are crushing it. Perfect. Thanks for having me, Max. Thanks, dude. I appreciate it. We'll see everyone next week. All right. Thanks, guys.